Hello, I'm Tim Rogers, professional video game expert. You are watching Kotaku.com. What time is it? It's Octopath Traveler O'Clocktopath Traveler. When I was in second grade, the doctor said I was an octopath. My parents were scared. It turns out I was just good at math. You may be wondering, what is an octopath traveler? Is it a special type of adventurer who has eight personalities? Seriously, if that's the big plot twist, I am going to lose my bonkers. I mean, it actually makes sense. Uh, maybe the eight characters don't talk to each other during the main story because they're the same person. Okay, that's enough of that. That. How about we don't make fun of the name of this game anymore? It's actually a pretty good name. It's a game about eight characters, all of whom are travelers, who travel down eight different paths. Octopath is thus relevant. It's also easy to Google. And if we keep casually making fun of it, the developers are probably going to call their next game something like Uprising Odyssey, Epic Origins, or Infinite Undiscovery. Also, by the way, it might be interesting to someone to point out that the word octopath rendered into Japanese katakana is octopus, which is identical to the way you'd pronounce the English word octopus if it were rendered into katakana. That's neat! I haven't beaten this game yet, so I don't know for sure, though if the great ultimate evil final boss in this game is not an octopus monster, I am going to legit lose my bonkers. I'll yell, where's my bonkers? I'm trying to make where's my bonkers my new catchphrase, so... Shout me out in the comments if you like that. Octopath Traveler is a Japanese RPG developed by Square Enix, the publisher of such games as Live Alive, Final Fantasy, Four Heroes of Light, Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song, and Saga Frontier. Octopath Traveler stars eight different characters, each of whom has a different profession and a different reason for deciding to leave their hometown to travel the world. The game asks you to pick one of these characters, and then, once you've left their hometown behind, you decide the path to take through the world. As you walk this path, you'll meet the other characters. Describing Octopath Traveler as a game about choices is about as accurate as describing a rat's nest as Mario Party for rats. Well, that's an understatement. It'd perhaps be more appropriate to say that Octopath Traveler's game design is a series of glued together rat's nests of choices which scream at, melt onto, and drip all over one another. Choice is among life's most stressful agonies. Games are typically a leisure activity. So it was that on a hot summer day with my air conditioner blazing, I proceeded past Octopath Traveler's title screen and was immediately stressed the heck out with the character selection screen. As my resume has indicated to many employers in the past, I just can't make up my mind when you offer me a whole world with many different lives to lead. I saw these eight lovely characters and I thought, there's just no way I can pick only one. So here's what I did. I picked them all. All. I played each of the main characters' opening chapter in a separate save file. To relieve myself of having to choose what order to play them in, I used my old friend, the English alphabet. So I started with Alfin and ended with Tressa. Remarkably, each of these prologues was exactly one hour long. I mean, look at these save files. Disclaimer, I played Octopath Traveler the absolute wrong way. I'm serious, you are definitely not supposed to play it this way. You're meant to pick one character and then go with the flow. If you're worried about missing characters' melodramatic, slow-paced opening prologues, don't be. When you meet a character for the first time, you are given the opportunity to view their prologue. Then you get to help them kill their prologue boss. The boss's difficulty will even have scaled up to accommodate your party size. The cutscenes even ignore the other party members and pretend the new character is alone. That's nice! Wait, actually it's not. This information still doesn't help you choose which character you're going to start with. Well, I've played all their prologues, so it's time for me to help you find out which Octopath Traveler Traveler are you? Alfin is an apothecary from the Riverlands. That's actually what the place is called, I'm not making a Game of Thrones joke. If you're a translator who worked on localizing Octopath Traveler, you're gonna want to play as Alfin, just because you get to read the word apothecary a lot. Actually, I'm making fun of this word, though, like, calling him a pharmacist would have been inaccurate, and medicine man would have been a 
little wrong. Alfin can make items out of common ingredients. He can even make them during battle. Of course, in his prologue, he's alone, so he's just making items for himself while a frog beats him up. Notice that in your prologue, they give you a better weapon than your starting weapon before you can even fight your first battle. This was the first scenario I played, so I took it as an intriguing sign. I had officially been reminded of Saga, also known as the Final Fantasy Legend for Game Boy. Is this a Star Trek reference? Alfin decides to travel the world after saving his best bud's daughter from the venom of a disgusting boss monster snake. She gets a taste of poison, and he gets a taste of the thrill of helping people in need. Have you ever met a person at a party and they're like, I'm a doctor? And all you can say in response is, wow, my mom still hasn't talked to me since I decided not to become a doctor. If so, Alfin might be the character for you. Cyrus is a scholar. Octopath Traveler asks the question, what if the World of Ruin from Final Fantasy VI watched a randomly selected episode of Game of Thrones? Cyrus Cyrus is a maester in the Citadel. I mean, he's a scholar at the Royal Academy in Atlas Dam. He has a lot going on. His two students are teenage girls, both of whom might have a crush on him. One of them is jealous of the other, so she starts a salacious rumor. Wow, that's anime as heck. You know, back when I was in high school, we did not have anime streaming on demand 24-7 whenever we wanted it. We just had Final Fantasy VI. One day, Cyrus notices a particular ancient tome is missing from the library. Uh-oh, that's a straight-up Sherlock Holmes reference. Bro. In the slightly more grounded than usual fantasy world of Octopath Traveler, a scholar suffices for a wizard. Of all the characters, Cyrus is the one that begins with two elemental spells. He's got ice and fire right off the bat, and you'll have to purchase the lightning spell if you want to defeat Cyrus's book-thieving scholar rival. Are you the sort of fellow who relishes every opportunity to substitute the word somnolence for sleep? If so, mosey on over to Cyrus Town. He disembarks from the big city to escape nasty rumors and search for books. Can you, off the top of your head, think of a book you would love to own a hardcover first edition of? If so, maybe Cyrus is your Gyrus. Hannet is a hunter. She's from the far northern woodland snow hole of Winterfell. No, sorry, that's a Game of Thrones town again. Her mentor disappeared a year ago. He, oh, uh, what? It will behoove me to leave without bidding my favorite prentice affair thee well. Hannet and her people and a lot of seemingly random present tense verbs with E-N. I speed dialed Google.com to see if anyone out there hates this. A lot of people sure do. If this would bother you, maybe skip the dialogue in her prologue. I gotta say, I admire the gumption of the localization team. The casual game player is likely no stranger to an occasional dost and thou, though this sort of cold-blooded Jar Jar Binksian Macbethism is a glove slap upon the countenance of even the loudest of Ren Fair attendees. Fun fact. I studied linguistics in college. That involved learning the difference between accusative and genitive case. It involved learning the phrase formula for the unreal, vis-a-vis -vis the concept of irrealis mood. I studied ancient Hebrew and Old German and Algonquin subjunctive verb conjugations. I could explain what I think might be going going on with the verb conjugations in this character's story, though that would be too much fun for the localization team. I know you're watching this. At any rate, the guy who interviewed me for this job, first of all, he was a really nice guy. He didn't say nothing about my having to lecture on early modern English at any point. Plus, this video would get about 33 minutes longer. Hannet can trap monsters and then use them in battle later. This makes them sort of like summons, sort of like Pokemon, and also sort of like disposable party members. They can only be used a set number of times before they're gone. This game now officially reminds me a lot of the Saga series. If Gao is your favorite character in Final Fantasy VI, you can't go wrong with Hannet. Olberic is a knight. He's like a solid snake ronin. His story is cowboyishly simple. His lord was killed and his kingdom destroyed eight years ago. 
That kind of reminds me of Cyan in Final Fantasy VI. At present, he occupies his days with the grace-fallen tough guy's two truest pastimes, keeping to himself and living the simple life. A situation involving local ruffians summons him back into action. Let me just say that I love the battle system in this game. Olberic is the mechanically simplest character, so the fact that Octopath's battles are exciting even with the simplest character fighting one-on-one -on -one against monsters says a lot. Not a lot of non-Pokemon JRPGs can pull off exciting one-on-one -on -one battles. Enemies have shield points. They lose shield points when you attack them with their weakness. When their shield points reach zero, the enemy is broken and misses one turn. This also cancels whatever attack they were planning. You earn one boost point for every turn when you don't use a boost point. You can store up to five boost points. You can use up to three per turn. Boost your character to enhance their attack power and one or more of their abilities. Battles are thus a sweet dance between your boost and enemies' shields. Once you get four party members together and you're fighting like three or four enemies who have three or four different weaknesses each and have three or more shield points, it gets pretty wild. For example, mages can boost their spells. Interestingly, Olberic can boost his defend command. Now he'll block for others with increased defense. The more times you boost it, the better the defense. This combines the old cover abilities from Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy VI with the modern MMO or MOBA concept of tanking. I absolutely love little touches like this, and Octopath Traveler's battle system's game design is infested with little touches like this. So if you've ever willingly enjoyed playing tank in a MOBA or MMORPG, maybe Old Beric is your Octopath Traveler Traveler. Meanwhile, if the appeal of a primarily physical character of perfectly average starting stats appeals to you, you should choose to play as Camille in Seventh Saga, Enix's 1993 RPG that, come to think of it, lets you choose from between seven characters in the beginning. Ophelia is a cleric. She's the adopted daughter of the bishop of a big cathedral. Her sister, Lyanna, while that's actually just straight up a Game of Thrones name, is the bishop's trueborn daughter. Wow, trueborn is, that, that's a Game of Thrones word. Hey, wait a second. Bishop is a Catholic thing. Bishops don't have children. I realize this is supposed to be a fantasy world, though like maybe don't call him a bishop. I mean like, just make a word up. Like, Archmaester. I wonder if she's a reference to Hudson's 1995 RPG, Anearth Fantasy Stories, which also opens with the legendary hero, as an infant, being left on the steps of a church in a snowy town. The player's first action in Anearth Fantasy Stories is to press a button to make the baby cry. The passerby who hears you picks you up and raises you, determining your character class. In Anearth Fantasy Stories, you pick one of many possible parents. That's neat! Ophelia is the first character you see in the title screen intro. She's also really, really strong. Her prologue is definitely the easiest. She casts holy magic. Plot-wise, she's kind of like, what if Terra and Celis from Final Fantasy VI were squeezed into one cardboard cutout? Seeing as she starts in a snow town and she is an orphan, I wonder if she's a direct reference to Terra. In that case, maybe she's the true main character. I mean, they do start your cursor nearest to her. Your sister calls you Feely at one point. Wow, that's a name that shouldn't ever be abbreviated. Primrose is a dancer. She lives in Sunshade, which is a dark and seedy pleasure district under a rock in the desert. Her story is pretty adult. In reality, she's the daughter of the King of Hornburg. She witnessed three men with crow tattoos assassinate her father. She grew up in a dancer brothel, dreaming of revenge. Primrose can recruit townspeople to join her with her allure skill, and then summon the townsperson in battle a limited number of times. Yeah, you heard me right, cowboy. In the ever so slightly grounded fantasy world of Octopath Traveler, hot girls are the Pokemon trainers, and loser guys are the Pokemon. Check out this boss she fights. Now see, this is 
genuinely incredible to me. I'm, uh, I'm not joking here. This is, this is a direct Romancing Saga 3 reference. See, the player characters are one size of human. The boss's lackeys are exaggerated RPG monster size humans. And the boss himself is an exaggerated RPG boss monster sized human. As far as writing goes, Primrose's story sure is the most interesting to just hang out with right at the beginning of the game. There's something about revenge plots. If you don't think Kill Bill is the worst Quentin Tarantino movie, which it is, maybe Primrose is your octopath bride to be. Therion is a thief. He can steal items from enemies and townspeople. He gets insinuated into cat burglarizing an impregnable mansion whose owner then blackmails him on a quest to retrieve three dragon eggs. No, wait, dragon eggs was a Game of Thrones joke in the game there actually called Dragonstone Gems. And Dragonstone is like literally the name of Daenerys Targaryen's castle in Game of Thrones. It's, man, I don't know. I love this. At the end of battles, Therion often yells, Where's the nearest tavern? Where's the nearest tavern? So yeah, you could say he's a bit of an alkthopath. That's my favorite joke that I wrote for this whole thing. Let me know if, if that was okay. He's definitely the best dressed character in the game. He looks like he could star in the modern gritty reboot of Wild Arms. Hey, Wild Arms is a game that lets you choose one of three characters at the beginning, each with their own opening chapter. Look at Therion's soft gray hair and his hot magenta cape. Based on his appearance and his profession, Cat Burglar, he was the number one character I most wanted to play. However, by the end of his prologue, I was a bit sick of his Cloud Strife 42069 fanfiction jerk attitude. Infiltrating a mansion and stealing a treasure sounded like an exciting way to start a video game. To me, a person who has seen every heist film ever made, I think. So I had stupidly high hopes. I thought, maybe this is going to feel like the opera house scene in Final Fantasy VI. Oh god, I've mentioned Final Fantasy VI like nine times in this video already, and like only just now did I realize that it would so own so hard if they remade Final Fantasy VI to just look exactly like this. I'm sure people on the internet have just been saying that like crazy ever since they saw the first trailer. And uh, yeah, I agree, man. The mechanical spirit of a well-oiled heist caper is definitely not something this game was interested in emulating any way more than superficially. Of all the opening scenarios in Octopath Traveler, this is the one to most remind me of the stringy tenuousness of Saga Frontier. So if you love Saga Frontier because one of the characters starts on an airship, check out Therion. Additionally, if your first thought when you look at a screenshot of this game is, I hope the characters have British accents, then clearly you're jonesing for some cockney rhyming slang. Look, tea leaf means thief. So if this sort of detail makes you want to run up the apples and pears and jump into Uncle Ned to play Psychopath Scavenger on your seven-year itch a la mode, Therion is likely your best old china plate. Tressa is a merchant. Also, she's my favorite. I played all eight of these intros in a row. I gotta say, I was burned out on the slow-paced storytelling by the time I got to Tressa. Oh well, it turns out I love her. She works at a shop in a seaside town. She can use wind magic because merchants sell goods and goods arrive on ships and ships need wind. One day, some pirates get rowdy in Tressa's town. This same day, a cool guy shows up on a sweet boat. Tressa outwits the pirates. The cool guy inspires Tressa to explore the world. Tressa's story is the most mundane. Maybe that's why it resonated so well with me. Did I not, myself, one day long ago, quit my job at a Target store, graduate from college, and leave India and then proceed to circumnavigate the entire planet Earth multiple times? If you yearn for the sun-glinty waters and relax at Italian tunes of a seaside haven, and if you appreciate that the apostrophe S in the phrase heart's content is not a possessive, Tressa is your octopath traveler traveler. She is also mine. Tressa was the character whose story I stuck with after completing her prologue. I scooped up Ulberic, Primrose, and then Cyrus. This battle system continues to fascinate me. See this? It says untouched. The battle system literally offers an experience point bonus for not taking damage during a battle. This hints at a shocking level of depth. I've now played for about 20 hours, and I'm pretty sure there's an untouched victory solution for every formation of common enemies. Octopath Traveler. 
is a game designed for FAQ writers. It is Rubik's Cubes all the way down. From within the depths of Octopath Traveler, the bravely default pedigree sings so loud it's practically shrieking. Speaking of shrieking, wow, that battle music sure does give me some hot romancing saga vibes. I may have taken a full day of my life to get to know the Octopath Traveler Travelers, though I definitely still know myself the best. I know for a fact that I'd be here all day if I started talking about the genius work of romancing saga minstrel song composer Kenji Ito, so I'd better quit while I'm wherever I am right now. So, which Octopath Traveler Traveler should you start as? Uh, clearly it's Ophelia. She's the only orphan who doesn't know who her parents are, so clearly she's the stereotypical JRPG protagonist. And all of the characters' initials literally spell out the word Octopath. And if you start as Ophelia first, then the closest character is Cyrus, then Tressa, then Olberic, then Primrose, then Alfin, then Therion, then Hanit. Shout me out in the comments if you think fast travel sorta kills the mood of a game with Traveler in the title. So yeah, you're obviously supposed to start with her, not do what I did. Well, I did what I did, and it's done. I have no regrets, because I was born stupid. However, I will not die hungry. Video games forever, Kotaku.com. Oh no, wait. How did I get through this whole video without mentioning Tecmo's Secret of the Stars, which was released in Japan as Akutalian? Oi there. Gov, can I get me a pint of Apple Unlimited?